Yo, quick disclaimer, uh, the video's already ended, I finished recording it, but this is before the video starts. Just to let y'all know, mage builds are not the only way, okay? I'm not saying you should only go mage, alright? You can certainly go many other playstyles, there's many more very unique builds that aren't magey, alright? There may be more so on the mantra side, maybe they are mages, whatever you want to call it, but there are other options, okay? I'm not saying just go mage, but this is my opinion, so I'm only recommending this if you have very high ping and you can't play in most games. Do with you will with that information. Alright, so I'm going to be going over why you should make a mage build and why you might benefit from it. So, making a mage build, a few things you need to understand is when it comes to making a mage build, the important things are intelligence. Alright, first of all, intelligence. You want to spam your mantras as much as possible. Alright, and have a ton of ether. And a lot of people, it's... It's not necessarily been gate kept, but rather not talked about. And I feel like talking about this might just make your build slightly better, all right? So a lot of people don't go intelligence. They just go like, oh, 60 charisma, uh, be a competitive build, willpower, all right? Be your 20% extra pen, which isn't bad. It's good, all right? Not all builds allow you to go 90 intelligence just all the time. So. In certain cases, you're going to have to go to your 80 willpower or stick to your 60 charisma, which isn't bad, alright? But for full-on mage builds that may not need strength, may not need willpower, you should go 90 intel. Here's why. First of all, going 90 intelligence allows you to unlock a talent called Ether Overdrive, uncap your pen, gain 1% uh, pen for every 10 points of intelligence that you have. Well that's the reason why some of the clips you see some of the mage builds are doing so much damage all right and what would make a good mage build one well a good mage build i would say in my opinion is one that has good all-around skills all right you can do high damage you have great mobility that's a good mage build if you want some good mobility mage builds i know people like wrath make some me personally, I don't go Star Kindred that much, but Star Kindred would make a very good mage build. Yeah, the main things to consider are 90 intel. Capitalize off of 90 intel. If you can go 90 intel on a build that's based around mantras, I would do so. Alright? And that's how you get these builds that end up doing just so much damage off of like one or two combos. They're just so cheesy. Flame Assault has its very good mobility. I rock it on my Flame Ice Mage. Flame Leap, I used to rock Reversal Flame Leap, which is still really good. Reversal Flame Leap, don't get me wrong, it's very good. It's incredibly good. Probably better than normal Flame Leap. But I've been starting to use this tech with Flame Ballista where I Flame Leap into the air and I use Flame Ballista mid-air just to catch some people and so I can get off my Ballista peacefully. I know you can use Spring Spark, yes, but that does drain your Flame Ballista's Ether, especially if you don't have a lot of Ether already. But yeah, and why you should make a Mage build now, like before Mage build, ugh, it's weird, right? But why you should make it now is because the servers suck. They suck. I'm going to be honest with you, the servers suck. And it's not like Archmage, he can't do anything about that, alright? Don't blame the devs, the Deepwoken devs. You blame the people at Roblox. And actually, don't even blame them. You know, that might cost a lot of money, alright? You don't know what their budget looks like. It's probably a lot, but we'll see, alright? Maybe time will tell. Maybe we might get better servers someday. But I will tell you, your average person can't parry, alright? They're going to be lag spiking. Parry trading is, is still a good way, a form of PvP, but let's be honest, this is in verse 1, alright? And people might call you weird for making a mage build, but at the end of the day, is it really build carried? Like, is it really build carried if you put together these perfect talents together, spend the layer 2s, alright, to make your build just perfect, just get that perfect thing, alright? And you, you, you synergize these talents so well that the build is just all around so good no one can beat you like is that really build carried like keep that in mind like is that really build carried because if anything that's that's mentally carried that's mentally carried people will call sheep and sheepskin bad but he's he's carried by his good knowledge of making builds all right so that's what you need to do stop people need to stop embracing being uh, focus based around M1, alright? Change the meta, do something unique, do something different, alright? There's different things being done. Curve Blade was never in the meta for a while, and you brought, you got freaking Acid Quirr, Acid 
Q W E R T Y. All right, you got him. He's now he he brought Curve Blade back into the meta. All right, and not because, not because Curve Blade got buff. No, it's because of how he utilizes his mantras. All right, people may call you cheesy. Don't mind them. You're just trying to have fun. At the end of the day, I say, having fun on Deep Woken is better than to sit in six hours of chime and gain two elo well guys we did it guys we finally finally we ended on a positive note it took me 54 games and six hours all to gain two elo